Hi, my name is Andrew Arnold. I am a field application engineer with AGI. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take a CAD geometry, import it into space claim, do some modifications, and then export into SDK to add articulations and do further analysis. With that, let's go ahead and get started. So first we'll start in space claim. The first thing that we're going to need to do is actually import our CAD geometry. So here what we're going to be looking at is going to be a Navstar or GPS satellite. Now the nice thing about space claim is that we can actually import through a variety of different CAD formats. In this case, we're going to select all supported file types and we're going to select the SOLIDWORKS assembly. Great, so once our CAD has finished importing, we can go ahead and take a quick look around. So one of the things that we're going to notice is that we're going to see our entire satellite face. We can see the nadir facing uh, portion of our satellite, which is going to include a variety of different antennas. We can also see, of course, our solar panels. And what we're going to be showing you here today is how to actually um, create articulation points for these solar panels to be able to rotate about a fixed axis, as well as attach points. From there, we can export that into SDK and then be able to show how these solar panels articulate and then also see some onboard self-imaging cameras as well. So the first thing that we're going to do um, is actually adding the articulation points for our solar panels. To do so, well, we're going to start by simplifying the geometry a little bit for our view. We're going to turn off everything in our component tree except for our actual solar panel assemblies. So one of the things that we'll notice is if we actually look at our solar panel assemblies, that it's going to be referencing this body origin uh, here. And one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is that this origin is actually separate from these different pivot points on board our, our uh, satellite solar panels. So one of the things that we need to do is correct the origin for which these solar panels will be rotating about. To start, I'm going to begin by renaming these solar panels something a little bit more meaningful. So instead of solid two, I'm going to rename this solar panel one. And in a similar fashion, I'm going to rename solid three solar panel two. Now in this hierarchy, we can see that uh, these different uh, parts are denoted by these this green icon here. Now one of the things in order to use the STK articulation conversion, we need to actually make each one of these parts a new component. So I'm going to right click on solar panel one and select move to new component. We'll notice that this part gets added kind of within this new sub assembly as solar panel one. And in a similar fashion, I'll right click on solar panel two and select move to new component as well. So it hasn't changed anything with the geometry. It's just added them to these new components denoted by this gold or tan icon here in the component tree. So after we've made our new component objects, the solar panel one and solar panel two, we need to create our new origin objects here as well. So what I'm going to do is create an origin that's going to be attached along the center line of this bracket that is a part of the solar panel one component. So I'll come to this design tab and I will select this origin icon listed here. Once I do so, I can see that I'm now prompted with this new origin object. What I want to do is stick it along the center line of this bracket assembly, and I can see that it sticks to this denoted by this green dot that appears here in the middle. So once I see that, I can go ahead and click to accept its placement. Now what I'm going to do just to make sure um, I don't get confused with a different origin is I'm going to rename this one origin one. And then I'm going to actually add this to the same component hierarchy as solar panel one. And then in a similar fashion, I'm going to follow these same steps, but with solar panel two. So I'll create a new origin here and then attach it along the center line of solar panel two. I'll rename this one origin two and then attach it or add it to the hierarchy of that solar panel component. Now, one of the things that we'll notice is that our Z and our X axes are pointing along the same uh, direction, but our Y axes are kind of actually flipped 180 degrees from one another. Um, now, this isn't necessarily an issue here, and this is something that we'll actually account for uh, when we articulate and define how these solar panels are going to articulate, because we're going to want to assume that they uh, move and rotate at the same rate. So we've kind of defined the origins uh, for the solar panels. The next thing that we're going to do are define our attach points. So we're going to say that this GPS satellite is going to have two onboard imaging sensors. The first one is going to be located on the nadir facing uh, or the nadir face of this GPS satellite. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick, you know, um, one of these kind of different cones or antennas that we see sticking out from the satellite. 
So again, on this design page, I'm going to select this icon denoted here as the points icon. I'll select the point, and then I just choose a face to add it on. So we can see that this point gets added to this cone here. Now what I'm going to do to make sure that I don't confuse the name of this point, I'm going to select the point in the hierarchy tree and rename this one Nader, since this is our Nader facing a position of our satellite. The next thing that we're going to do is add in a point that's going to be um, along the actual body of the satellite looking down the solar panel. So we might say that this face over here uh, might be a positioning for a camera uh, that would be responsible for looking down the solar panel and seeing how uh, it's rotating as well as its status. So what I'll do is in a similar fashion, I will come into this design tab and select the point icon and then just choose a face on here to add the point. Now, good practice anytime you add a point or an axis, um, it's always good to choose the select icon again to make sure that you're not adding a variety of different points. So here I'm going to name this one selfie cam for selfie camera. And now that we've added in both our origins as well as our points, we can go ahead and define you know, these different characteristics as they apply to SDK. The next thing that I'm going to do is come to the systems toolkit top toolbar. I'm going to select the STK articulation button followed by the solar panel one component. And this is going to allow me to begin to define our articulations for these different solar panel objects. So the first thing that I need to do is select the origin for which I'm going to be applying our articulations. You'll notice that by default, the origin that was located kind of in the center of our spacecraft is the selected origin. So what I'm going to do instead is select the origin that we added for the solar panel one object. So here I'm going to select this axis or origin icon and then choose the origin associated with solar panel one. Here on the left hand side within the structures field, I'm given a few different options. I can either translate the solar panel object, I can rotate it or scale it. In this case, all we want to do is be able to rotate about the body Z axis denoted by this blue arrow here. So what I'm going to do is come to our rotation field, see that the body Z axis is actually associated with yaw and select enable yaw. Once I've made this selection, I can choose the bounds for how I would like to rotate. I'm going to leave this defined as negative 360 to 360 degrees. In a similar fashion, I'll come to the solar panel two object. Here I will select the axes, choose the axes two associated with this and then enable yaw. So that defines everything for being able to articulate our actual solar panels. The last thing that we need to do is select our SDK attach points. So I'm going to select the SDK attach points and in our hierarchy tree, I'm going to select Nader followed by use as SDK attach point. And then in a similar fashion, I'll select selfie cam and then use as SDK attach point. So the reason that we want to use these SDK attach points is it allows us to define the origin for a sensor object in SDK. So we're going to say that, you know, we're going to place a one sensor on the nadir face of the satellite body, and then another sensor that's going to be on the satellite body looking down the solar panel. So we've gone ahead and defined all of our articulations and attach points. All we need to do next is then export to SDK. So we'll select this export to SDK button. And we'll notice that we are given a defaulted a GLTF format. So I'm just going to rename this one as Navstar. And then select Save. So once the export has completed, we'll be prompted with this message, we can go ahead and select OK. And then now I'm going to go ahead and go into SDK. So I've gone ahead and built up just a quick starter scenario here in SDK to highlight kind of what we've done. You'll notice that we're going to have a satellite that's going to be in a LEO orbit. I mean, it's just going to actually propagate for 24 hours out. And then on board this satellite, we actually have two kind of pre-populated image or sensors as well. We have one that's going to be our nadir facing sensor. So we can see that it's obviously just pointing towards the Earth. And then the second one, this selfie cam, is going to be kind of looking down the actual solar panel body. Now the projection for this has been minimized uh, just kind of uh, for better clarity's sake within this scenario. So I'll turn these off and then we'll go ahead and bring in the updated GLTF model that we've created in SpaceClaim. So I will open up Satellite One's properties and then first navigate over to our 3D graphics model page. 
And what I need to do next is in this model field, I need to select the actual model file that we're going to be using. So I'll select this ellipsis button next to model file. And here I'll navigate to the desktop where I've saved that updated Navstar. So we can see the Navstar GLB. We'll select Open. And then I'll select Apply. Now we'll notice that kind of along the way that this did get transformed or offset about 90 degrees. So we can go ahead and account for that here as well. So I will go to the 3D Graphics Offsets page. I will enable a rotational offset of 90 degrees in the Z axis. And once I select Apply here, we should see that the satellite orientation is corrected. Next, we want to see the actual articulations that we applied. So I'll go back to that 3D graphics model. And within this articulations field, I'm going to select view. Now we should see two articulations that we've added here, solar panel one and solar panel two. So as a quick check, I'll select solar panel one and then just move its articulation to verify that it has added this. And we can see that it has done so correctly. I'll set that back to zero. And in a similar fashion, I'll select solar panel two, scroll with its articulation and make sure that that is functioning as well and set that back to zero as well. We can select OK. Now, in the case of this scenario, we're going to use a pre-built articulation file known as articulation.sama. So I've defined this in the actual scenario directory. And what this articulation file is going to do is actually automate these articulations for us. Now, it's a rather simple thing to do, and the template for doing so uh, can be found on the help page. But how this articulation file is going to work is first, we're going to define a new articulation we're going to define the start time. So here, we're going to start at zero seconds, and then we are going to last for a duration of 86,400 seconds, or approximately 24 hours. In the case of the dead band acceleration, uh, the acceleration duration and deacceleration duration, I'm not going to uh, care too much about these values as well as the duty cycle, but what I am going to care about is going to be the, the uh, actual period uh, for the solar panel. So here I've defined the period as 3,600 seconds, meaning that we'll complete a rotation every hour. And then the most important part here is to make sure that the articulation is named as solar panel one, which is actually going to match the articulation name that we defined in space claim, and that the transformation value was defined as yaw, which is the same name that we applied in space claim as well. And then lastly, we'll notice that the we'll notice here that the start and end values are 360 degrees, both positive and negative. Now, you, I had mentioned earlier that when we were adjusting the origins within the space claim, um, that the Y values were offset for the solar panel one, as well as the solar panel two. And we can actually account for that here in the articulation. So this articulation applies everything with solar panel one, starts at 360 degrees and, neg and ends at negative 360 degrees. But for solar panel two, its articulation is going to be identical, but it's going to start at negative 360 degrees and go to 360 degrees. So they're kind of offset in phase, but they'll line up as we actually play this out. So I've called out this articulation file. I can select OK. And if we just want to play this real quick, we'll to verify that the articulation is working, we can select play. So we can see right off the bat that both these solar panels are articulating in phase with one another. And then lastly, I'm going to go ahead and turn on our different imaging sensors as well, and then define their origin points based off the attach points we defined in space claim. I'll start first with the Nader sensor. So if I open up its properties and navigate to the 3D graphics vector offset page, I can select this attach point. I'll verify that Nader is selected. And when I do so, we should see that the origin for the sensor went from kind of the origin of the actual satellite body to along this Nader face to the attach point that we defined in space claim. In a similar fashion, if I open up the properties for selfie cam and then go to its 3D graphics vector offset page, enable the attach point and select selfie cam, that it should be added to this face down here where we had said, you know, might be a position where we want to insert a camera. And we can tell from the projection that it is going to actually look down the solar panel face as well. So from there, we can go ahead and select OK. And last but not least, we're going to open up what's known as Operator's Toolbox to give us a better sort of operational view of how we might see these solar panels articulate, as well as our nadir facing view. 
So I'm going to right click on our space claim scenario, expand scenario plugins and select operators toolbox. So operators toolbox is a really great addition to SDK. It provides a variety of different tool sets that kind of allow you to streamline kind of common repetitive tasks in SDK. The one we're going to be using here is known as the sensor bore site view. If you want to learn a little bit more about how Operators Toolbox works or how to actually use the toolbox, there's a variety of different videos on the AGI YouTube page for SDK Geeks. Great, so we'll go ahead and open up the sensor bore site view. So it's denoted by this kind of target icon within Operators Toolbox. And once it opens up, we're given a few different options. So first we can select our sensor, and then we can define some of the display options like show the latitude, longitude, a compass, rulers, as well as the crosshairs. I'm going to leave everything defaulted and generate both a view for our Nader sensor as well as our selfie cam sensor. So I'll select Nader and then create sensor view. We'll notice that it auto adjusts. Um, and especially since this sensor is defaulted as a rectangular 45 by 45 vertical horizontal half angle. The next thing I'll do is then back in sensor bore site view in a similar fashion, I'll select the selfie cam and create sensor view. I'll close out of operators toolbox. And then I'll just go ahead and readjust these for our viewing pleasure. And then we can go ahead and just play out our scenario, kind of see an operational view of how this is going to look. All right, and then we can go ahead and select play. So within this, we can see kind of a variety of different views. First, we can get a general uh, con ops view of our actual satellite, you know, being able to see in the 3D graphics view, um, both the sensor positions as well as where they're pointing. And then we can also get some really powerful views relative to, you know, what an, what an onboard sensor might actually see in an operational environment. So here we could, of course, see the, the Nader sensor view as well as along our solar panel body as well, being able to view those solar panels articulate. Awesome, so that's everything I had for you today. In summary, we took a external CAD drawing into space claim, added articulations and attach points, brought it into SDK to do some analysis, as well as get a better view of operationally how a satellite might function. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.